When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From the time when Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come. As Jesus was walking, Beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said. I will send you out to fish for people. And once they left their net and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Javity, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Javity, preparing their net. Jesus called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and follow him. Then Jesus threw out Galilee's teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the goodness of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. The word of God to God's people and the God's people say, Amen. 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 Let us pray. Loving God, we are thank you with thanks for your word. Who present in us, and we thank you for Matthew who wrote this letter to all of us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us today and help us to understand the word of God. So that we can enjoy it. every time that we follow you. May a blessing upon your church and the people they are here and for those that are not here with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Follow me. Maybe he had that song, Follow Me. Maybe you 
you are thinking someone that you follow in your life. Maybe this word does remind you something it did before, or maybe you follow someone and you failed to, to reach to the end. What about if I say this to you, Jesus said, follow me. What changes in your life if you start following Jesus today? Let me help you and see how important Matthew wrote this letter to all of us. At the beginning of this year, we were talking about Jesus is the King. And the King who are willing to be with us. And today, the King starts proclaiming his ministry and invite all of us to follow him. Let's see how Matthew came for us this morning. When Jesus heard John, he is on his way to have been put in the prisons. There's something over there that strikes us. Before that John calling the people to follow the Messiah and to prepare themselves and repent, prepare the way for Jesus to come, our Messiah, the King. And now John in a prison and Jesus start to do his ministry. The ministry that we are waiting for, the ministry of love and the grace and harmony and peace to all of us. And now John decrees and Jesus increase his power. He is a king and he will ask all of us to follow him. When Jesus withdrew from to Galilee, there is a reason why. Many scholars believe Jesus withdrew to Galilee because Herod is a region of Herod. Herod, the ruler of that area, Galilee. And the significance of Herod over there, he's, he's a leader who take away things from the poor people. He loved to build, and all the building is not in Galilee, mostly in Jerusalem, in Judah. He walked everywhere and named the people over there and collect everything they had, even though they are poor, pounding by difficult life in there, he's still collecting money from them to do his project from the hand of the poor people. It may be that reason, or maybe another reason, you remember when Jesus was in Nazareth, he was, he was teaching in a synagogue in his own town, and they didn't like Jesus. And Jesus said, the prophet did not respect in his own town. It may be the reason, but according to Matthew, that is not the reason why that Jesus withdrew to Galilee or moving from Nazareth to a new place called Capernaum. And Capernaum is one of the new places for Jesus to be there. It's a center for trade in that area. And Jesus see an opportunity to meet the people to start his ministry. Remember that Jesus is coming to fulfill what the prophets say, especially Isaiah. But this time, that Jesus focusedly to fulfill that. And according to Isaiah, in Matthew, he says, say, He went and lived in Capernaum, says to fulfill. 
Whatever the scholars say about Jesus moving over there, it may be the way they express their feeling, or maybe how they do their research, but according to Matthew, he moved over there to fulfill what Isaiah said. And this is what Isaiah said. Land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Those two over there, I want you to see that. The way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. I want you to think again. Remember, Jesus asked to follow him. But let's see why Jesus said that. Remember the 12 tribes of Israel? There were 12 tribes, okay? They moved to Egypt and they returned back to the promised land and they divided land to each tribe. You know, they live in harmony. For some time, they have a conflict. The disagreement all happened in the families and ended up division. And ten of the tribe, of the tribe, sorry, live in the north area. Only two tribes in the south, the Judah and Benjamin. Two of the ten is Zebulun and Naphtali. Zebulun and Naphtali. Zebulun is the number six of the family of Jacob, and Naphtali is number nine in the family of Jacob. Somehow, when there are disagreement over there, opportunity for the enemies to take advantage of their disagreement. Think about that. When you have disagreement with someone, it is an opportunity for your enemies to come and take over that problem. We are not inviting them to come and solve the problem, but because the problem that we have, this goes split. And this split, it opens up opportunity for your enemies to walk in your life. Seven, Navdala, there are two of them. When Assyria conquered the north, and this is what they did, they deported all of them and they bring new people to the land of the ten tribes in Israel. You have to know geographical area, mostly of the land belong to the ten tribes. So they are tiny little bit belong to Judah and also Benjamin. When the Assyria arrived, they conquered them. That is Iraq now. And they took all, especially all the men. But the two face to disperse is Zebulun and also Naphtali. They are the two. When they walk into the land with ten tribes in the north, they pick those two to disperse. Face two to send out. Mostly they send out the men, the women stay and the children. Imagine the women, they trust their husband and their dad and their grandparents, no one over there. Who do you follow? When a chaos happened in a family, the enemies conquered, not only conquered them, but they removed what we love and we stay over there with no hope at all. And what they did, the Assyrian did, they sent all the men and bring all the people, whatever they want, from the Gentiles to occupy the land. They in the marriage and they stay over there for long. For so many years they've been staying over there. There's a darkness over there. No hope at all. No one over there to be followed. They are following the rules 
disagreement between themselves and the rulers who took over them. The life is so devastated. They have no freedom, they have no peace, they have no loving. Everything is bound down to them. Think about ourselves. When we live in the darkness, there's no hope at all. When we live in a circumstances is so high for us. There's no way for us to see the light. When we have the problems is bigger, like a mountain, there's no way for us to walk through that. You live in a shadow of death. There's nothing inside yourself. You are the prisoners for all of that. And Sabalon and Abdali is the good example for that. Remove from where they love, from the land where they belong. Everything they had, their parents over there, they removed them from over there. And bring the people that they know, the culture, there's no respect at all. They destroy everything, including the God they worship. The synagogue and everything had been destroyed. And here it is. Jesus came to restore it. When Jesus walked in, and here it is. The people living in the darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. All of a sudden, they were in the darkness. The light walked in to their life. Remember, that Jesus is our King who come and stay with us is the light for all of us. But somehow in our life, we need to let go what we have inside and allow the light of the King to come into us. And here's the sadly things that happen to us. We are in the light, but we still stay in the dark, inside the light. We didn't know this light. But because we are dark inside ourselves, ourselves control ourselves. And that's why Jesus is saying, by beginning to preach, repent. Turn away from that. You know, wish I didn't have time to preach to you about repent. And sometimes people thinking repent is a rock in front of them, it's so hard to push away. They live with guilt. It's not. It's not. Later on, I will, I will explain to you the repent that Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to repent for the kingdom is coming. Because his kingdom is all the great things is over there. Everything is good in his kingdom. But we are staying in our own kingdom. We think that is good. Yes, it is. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they are fishermen. They love what they are doing. They believe that they have faith in that. But when Jesus walked into their life and said, follow me, they repent. It's a turning point for them. No need for them to go and see the priest and say, I'm repenting of my sin. No need for them to go to the synagogue and say, Father, Father, I am a sinner. No. When Jesus calling you, he had to make yourself a turning point. And that turning point, that is repent. I'm no longer controlling myself to do whatever I want, but I let go. I let Jesus in front, inside my heart. The faithful people of Tracy, think about that. Are you willing to follow Jesus? You have to make a turn in your life. This is what I love. I love to be a fisherman. I supply everything for my family. But when he turned around and followed Jesus, remember his kingdom. There were a lot of great things over there, better than what you had in your life. And here it is. The fisherman, 
they went and caught the fish, they took their life, they bake, they smoke, they sell. What about that Jesus is saying to you now? I'll make you a fishes for the people, fishes for the men and the women. He made them live eternally. Because the kingdom of Jesus is more better than the kingdom that we have. I want you to think about that today. When Jesus calls you today, are you willing to follow him? Are you willing to let go what he had? This every time that Bruce talk about his dad, I was thinking about my dad. My mom died when she was 62 years old. I was 37 years old when they called me to ministry. I went to ministry, but before that I promised, Dad, I'll look after you. Your wife died, it's my responsibility. He had strong and seemed to be not okay in life. And God called me to follow him. Jesus called me to follow him. I said, Dad, there's something I need to take. There's a disagreement over there, but I make my way. When I make my way to ministry, then Jesus look after me, also look after my dad. And my dad lived for 88 years old. And he became a mayor in the district where he was. You see how great that Jesus is looking for you? All he can do, yes, I'll follow you. But he had to make a change in our life to turn and the turning point when he sees Jesus. Remember that Jesus said, He didn't choose me, I chose him. Traditionally, Rabbi never chose his students. And this time Jesus said, I chose you, I chose you, I chose you, I chose everybody. And we have to follow. Why did he say that? Because I have everything for you if you follow me. When Jesus walked, when the rabbi walked in the desert, only rabbi had a sandal. When he walked in the front, he kicked all the dust and everything in front. And when the dust came and covered all the followers, it is a grace of God to remind them that they are the follower of the rabbi. He had to look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, walk like Jesus, and smell like Jesus. It's the only way to know that you are following Jesus. The faithful people of Tracy, there's no other way for us to have the kingdom but to follow the king because the king owned the kingdom and the kingdom had more than what we have. All we can do is make a turn in our life and follow him, surrender and say, yes, I follow. I hope this today does help you in a new year, make a new direction in your life, knowing that Jesus invited you to follow him. Don't make a turn because he wanted to wait for him and say, follow me. Are you willing to follow him this year? Yes. 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 Are you willing to follow him? I follow him, I experience the love, the peace, and the joy of my life. Sometimes I walk into the house, my face is not happy. And Christian I say, Honey, can you walk inside the house with a joyful face? I make a turn in there. Every time I walk in the house, I let all ugly faces outside and walk in with a joyful, beautiful, handsome faces to my wife. What a joy, you know? What a joy. 
my wife just hugged me and said, welcome. Imagine them walking with an ugly face and saying, go and wash the dirty face before you walk in. And Jesus said, follow me and let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful. Every time you invite us to your kingdom, it's hard for us, oh God, because there's something that we love to do in our life. It's stuck. We are stuck in what we are doing. But we ask the Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to work with us in a way when you call us to follow. We make a turn in our life knowing what you ask for us is better than anything else that we have in our lives. May your blessing upon all of our brothers and sisters who are here. And for those that are not with us, in Christ's name, we follow you. Amen.